I'm here today because so many things is happening all at one time that I just kind of wanted to share with you. Yesterday, I got a batch of brand new chicks a day before Easter. Now, this morning, I wake up. I had three yesterday when I did the live video yesterday. I wake up and it's almost either 15 to 20 chicks in this in my incubator. I had no idea I would get that many chicks. So that's a miracle to me. So I wake up and that, that got my spirit going because yesterday I was just in my feelings about how the world is going. And it's almost like, you know, God can feel when I'm feeling low and when I'm feeling like I'm at my wick's end because this is the kind of stuff that ends up happening. So I, I'm in here drinking my coffee and I look out my window and I'm looking at these chicks, drinking my coffee, look out the window, and, and this is what I see. Let me see if I can find, yeah. And this is what I see. I'm going to try to bring that into focus if I can. Hold on. I don't know why that's not focusing. It, it, it would do this when, when I need it the most. Hold on, family. Let me try to re reset my camera. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My camera is tripping. It never. Yeah, this, my camera tripping, y'all. I'm. It just never fails, man. It never. This is why I hate this vertical stuff. I'm not even gonna get on hate today. Not today. Not today. I'm not doing it. Right now, I look out my window. And I'm catching another swarm of bees. I was at Freedom Acres. If anybody caught that short video, I was at Freedom Acres last week. And I go out there, caught a swarm of bees. And I'm like, I wake up out there. I caught a swarm of bees. And I'm sitting here like, I told my wife, I am not buying bees this year. Between, because I, I, I run a beekeeping business. So, we go around from city to city and we save honeybees out of trees, out of houses, so on and so forth. I told my wife, I am not purchasing bees this year. I'm not doing it. I know we're going to have more than we need. And instead of me selling off the hives this year, you know, because usually I catch them and then I sell them off. I keep a couple, I sell a couple. And this year, I'm just going to keep them all so I can reboost my bee yard here and on Freedom Makers. But what I'm here to show y'all today, for all the people that were interested in keeping bees, I know we didn't have the SOBs this year, Save Our Bees um, class. Life got, got busy, number one. And two, you know, uh, the head count was low. So here's the deal. I wanted to share this with everybody. Again, happy holidays, happy Easter. I don't know if that if everybody caught that when I don't know if I was recording yet or anything. But I wanted to let everybody know. I am not the average beekeeper. I'm not the kind of beekeeper that let me let me see if this camera will work again. Nope, still sucks. I'm not the kind of beekeeper that I don't put a whole bunch of chemicals on my hives. I, I don't put it any chemicals on my hives i don't put all of that weird stuff i don't use all that fake equipment i don't use all of, what, what is that one that one that pumped the honey out by itself that's trash um i'm not bashing them they just know they are trash they know their concept is is garbage to pump out honey and you don't go in there and inspect your hive and people think that you you putting it in people's minds that my dog one minute she don't want to come out she hear me talking now she want to come out come on peach peach i'm right here come on baby next time i, when I tell you come on come on We've been out here, we was out here for about 30 minutes and she got tired. So I took her back in the house. But 
I'm going to try my best to show y'all these bees. I don't use all of that weird equipment on my hives. Come here. Come on. Ooh. There she go. I don't use all that weird equipment. I don't use all of that. Um, you the one was tripping. I don't use all of that equipment. I don't use all that fake stuff. I don't use them phony fake hives. If, if I go and get my own honey, I go and get my own honey the old fashioned way because it's when you do it like that, you can check your hives. You can do everything you need to do. Check them, inspect them, see what's going on. You can fix certain things. Them new hives don't do that. And it's trash. So I'm in the middle of a swarm right now. And all I'm doing now is waiting for the queen. I don't know if y'all can. My camera is so tripping and I don't know how to fix it. This thing got too many too many stupid filters and all this other stuff and I don't know how to do that. And it's messing my camera up. So, hold on a minute. I'm gonna just walk up on the hive and show you. But I just wanted to let everybody know that was interested in keeping bees. It's not, it's, it's work. But all of that stuff that you be seeing is just like gardening. It's just like gardening where you see, you see gardening and farming done on a commercial level, an industrial level. And then you see us backyard farmers, us backyard gardeners doing it on a personal level. It's two entirely different things. It's no different with beekeeping. If you're going to keep bees, you're either going to do it on a commercial level on a industrial level or you're going to do it on a personal level and the way you handle both of those situations is totally totally different you understand so that ain't that that is not how we get down right here and just to show y'all because my camera is tripping let me see we're in the middle of a swarm what they're doing right now is cleaning these hives out if anybody didn't hear me before this hive had uh, died out from wax moth because I neglected this one hive right here. This is the construction hive. Stop doing it. Um, this is the construction hive and I neglected it because I, I thought it was just so strong and mighty. But I anyway, that was my neglect. So I left this hive out here with wax moth in it. This one had wax moth all up and down this tower. Stop doing that. So what happened was this swarm of bees been checking this hive out for the last week, right? Maybe even two weeks. This is why I don't bring my hives in the house. Now I'm gonna set you down, you keep doing that. This is why I don't bring my hives in the house and I don't use chemicals or nothing. Because if you leave your hives outside, even if they've had some sort of infestation or, all right, that's enough. If they have some sort of infestation or something, the, the swarm will come and they will clean up. They will clean up the hive themselves. And the part about that that I wanted to let people know is, what do you think they do in nature? They will, if y'all was watching last summer, they made a whole hive full of five gallons worth of honey inside of a man's compost bin that had you name it this compost bin this man had thrown everything in this giant compost bin like the size of a garbage can that you put out to the street he put everything in there stuff that didn't even need to be in there logs all kind of stuff if y'all watch that video i can't make this up because i did it live i cleared that that swarm out live and direct so it can't be fake it wasn't edited anything I think I was on that thing for about three or four hours or better. Let me tell you something. When bees find what they are looking for, they will move in and remodel everything just like you would do in your own house. 
you will sit and you'll be like, you know, this is a nice house. It got good bones. If we tear this wall out and it's some little bit of mold over here, we could just tear this little mold out. We can rebuild this wall and we'll turn around and we have a beautiful home. That's what bees do. So we think that you need a perfectly beautified brand new hive. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell everybody something that I, one of my tricks. When I buy a brand new hive, people set up brand new hives and they keep them in the house until they finally get their bees and then their bees fly off. So you see your 200 or $300 fly off in the air, right? I'm going to tell you, here's a little hat that I got. I'm going to show you all this because these bees, they are, they are coming. I'm going to show you all this little hat that I got. If you buy a brand new beehive, say you bought it off of Amazon or from the beekeeping store. If you, when you paint your outside or do or treat your outside of your box, whatever you're going to do. After you done doing that, go put your box outside. Let your box weather outside. Put it together. Put all the frames in it. Don't put the wax in there. But just put your frames in it. Put everything in it and set it outside. Let it rain on it a few times. Let the weather get to it. Let some pollen get in that boy. Everything. The reason I say that is bees like things to smell natural. They don't like the smell of fresh cut pine or fresh cut wood box. You want to know why? Because that smell like the tree just, just fell down and died. They don't want to move in that. That smell like fresh, broken tree. They don't want to move in that. They want something to smell like it's been out here for a long time. You want to know why? Just think on a human level. Because something that's been around a long time seems like it ain't going to be falling down anytime soon. Something that's been around a long time, that's been built with good structure, they think of trees the same way we think of our houses. And this is what you got. So all of those wax moths that was in there, they, are, they pulling all of those cocoons out and webbing out and laying them down here on the ground. It was a, a dead lizard in there, they pulled him out too. I would get closer, but I don't want to disturb them because the queen ain't here yet. They still just cleaning it out. They still just getting it together, right? Let me see if this is zoom. Oh, it'll zoom. It'll zoom. Now y'all can see better. Okay. Can y'all see that okay? They are coming from some wild hive somewhere. And they're cleaning it out because shortly the queen will be here and when the queen comes she will her swarm will block out the sun can y'all see that okay how you doing let me let me let me see some people in here real quick uh let me see oh my forehead got in say hey game nerd mom say i want to try a wax treated hive because uh it's so wet here it messes up the bottom board. A wax hive. I'm gonna need to know what you're talking about. A wax hive, uh, game nerd mom. A wax hive. Hey Taywo. Hey uh, Athena. Hey creating with Kita. How you doing? Hey Rogue One. Hey boss lady. How you doing? See, I can't wait to keep start beekeeping. I love this video. Thank you very much. This this is what we do. Hey, two Max in the pack. How you doing? Good to see you. I ain't seen you in a while. Hey, Camille P. Say, I've had a hive outside for three years and haven't gotten a swarm yet. Okay, Camille P. I'm about to tell you how to get a swarm. It's, it's several different ways. Uh, have you ever had bees, Camille P.? Have you ever had bees? How you doing, Crafty Leo? What's going on, my sister? I seen y'all hooking it up the other day uh, in the kitchen. You did the kitchen live and everybody was uh, making that meal. I sat back and watched like, I, everybody was like, I want to join too. I was wanted to be like, I want to join too. But I was out on Freedom Makers. Oh, say Camille P say, yes, you have. And you never got another swarm in those boxes whatsoever. 
So have you tried lemongrass or this thing called Swarm Commander? That's some stuff I use uh, when I'm on the road saving bees. I use Swarm Commander or uh, lemongrass oil, real lemongrass oil. If you do that, I'm telling you, you're going to get some hits. Jack Russell said, I have a hive on my property. I may, I may be moving, kind of nervous to disrupt them. They have been on the property for four or five years. What say you farm? I don't understand what you're saying, Jack Russell. You're, you're moving. I have a hive on my property. I may have been, I may be moving kind of nervous on oh are you talking about you have a whole beehive like this a setup and you want to move this setup to your new location i literally have videos on how to move your hive if you're interested you can email me at livefarmer73 at yahoo.com i moved a lot of my hives to freedom acres and i showed people how i did that Uh, Tay will say I grow lemongrass in the house. If you're going to get lemongrass, that's probably the best organic way to do it. Make it yourself. If you have an old queen, every old queen that I find dead, I put her in a jar of 90% um, alcohol. I crush her up and I use that because that is an attractant as well. You can go to my beekeeping playlist and that'll show you all of my years of me doing this. All of the stuff that y'all asking right now. Let me see. Uh, Never bored. Say, I have two. I have two thinking of getting a third one thriving. The second one is struggling. Okay. Okay. The second one is struggling. That happens too sometimes. You, you might need to requeen it. And if it's struggling that bad, you know what we do? We combine them. I will take one hive and, and put it on top of the other one and put a piece of newspaper in between the two hives. Get rid of the old queen, this struggling hive. Get rid of her because clearly she don't know what she's doing. Put those two hives together and make this one hive even stronger. And once that hive gets strong enough, separate them back again and let them make the new queen from this other DNA. And you will have two strong hives. I know everything I said sound crazy, but... Oh my God, do you ever get stung? Yes, I do. Get everybody, I'm gonna say this, for what is for what it's worth, getting stung, getting stung a few times a year for getting anywhere from five to twenty gallons of honey a year. You tell me is it worth it or not? That's like driving your car. You're gonna get a ticket eventually. Right. But it's worth it to drive, be able to drive around your city. You know, that ticket going to sting. It's going to hurt your pocket. Well, that's kind of like the bees are for me. I am going to get stung one time or another. And yes, it does kind of hurt for a little for a few minutes. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Because I got a whole room full of honey in there. Do the stings hurt more each time or pretty much the same? It just depends on on the bee. Um. Sometimes they half-ass get you. Sometimes they fully hit you so hard you hear them pop you. It just depends on how the bee is going to do it. it. I can't say they hurt worse or better, worse or less each time. It just depends on the bee and what they're trying to do. If they're really trying to defend their hives and they're really aggressive, each one they're trying to hit you, they, they start off about a mile away and then come down with their butts in the air to get you. And yeah, that hurt. But for the most part, they just kind of telling you to back off. They do not want to all kill. I mean, try to sting you and kill themselves off because that's what happened. They're just trying to protect, protect the queen. And if you don't get the message, they'll let you know. So in a minute, I was hoping I was hoping that this this swarm is going to take It's It's more and more bees here. Can y'all see this? Is more and more bees coming as we keep talking. I should have left it alone. It's more and more bees as we sit here. Um, let me see. I love to get into beekeeping. Do you need a permit for it? No, you might want to check your area for that, but nine times out of ten, you don't. But check your area, okay? 
Check your rules and regulations for your, your district and your location. Yes, yes, somebody said, who said that? Said hives have a personality. Yes, they do. Each one does. And then I'm, I'm going to hit y'all with a little crazy uh, lead philosophy in a minute that maybe go over your head. Let me see. Say, I'm taking, I'm taking a basic beekeeping class in my area. I can barely see y'all. The sun is in my eyes. Bear, uh, beekeeping class in my area in Hampton Roads, Virginia. I started purchasing equipment and boxes last year, but was waiting to take the class. You did everything right. Trust me. That, that even puts more money in your pocket because what you're doing is trying to make sure your bees don't fly off. Because your $300 will fly away quick. Game Dirt Mom says, um, are we staying till the swarm gets here? I want to see it. I'm I'm try, I'm gonna try because it's getting it's getting it's more and more bees coming as you can see. But there is nobody fanning yet, and I've been out here all morning. They have not moved fully moved in yet. That means the queen is not in there. She's not in there. And I'm telling you, y'all know how many times over the years that I've showed you me in the middle of several swarms. This ain't that. This is the hive coming to clean it up before mama come home. And they are cleaning, cleaning. See, it's a difference between when you see, when you see a, um, some bees coming to attack a hive or you see bees coming to rob a hive. It's different. It's a different vibe that they give when they're robbing out a hive it's just more frantic it's more frantic and they're spilling down the front of the hive and they're fighting other bees if the bee is if the hive is empty even that robbing looks different it's just because bees from different hives are coming here and robbing it so they're fighting each other to get all the goods that's left inside the the old warehouse so it looks different this is a swarm coming I've been doing this long enough and sitting out by these hives for so many years that I done figured out pretty much how this work. This, this is a movie and this is a, this is like before you, before you bring your mother-in-law to your house, you like everybody clean up. You know, your, your step or your mom in law coming for the holiday. Everybody who on bathroom duty, who sweep down the steps, somebody get the vacuum cleaner. That's what this is. That's exactly what this is. They're trying to clean up before their parents come home and talk about how they live in a, oh, y'all live here. I thought y'all was doing good. That's what this is. They bringing out all these crumbs and sweeping them off that porch down there. See it? Sweeping them off that porch. They pulling out, when you see them doing stuff like pulling out dead insects, pulling out dead lizards, dead frogs, they are cleaning that up for mama. When they're robbing a hive, they don't clean that stuff up. They walk right over top of a, a dead frog or a dead lizard. They will not clean that up. Let me say, uh, who doesn't know about cleaning up before mama gets home? There you go. Exactly. Uh, <coughs> T-Wo, man, that name. T-Wo says, I watch your B videos for hours. Thank you for that. Can you zoom in again? Yes, yes, I can. Uh, Game Nerd Mom said, Mama finna come home. Yes, she is. Y'all see? This is this is what I do. Now, here's the thing. I've had one B call already about three weeks ago. And right when I got there, the swarm disappeared. So they flew off before I could get them. It was some stragglers left behind, but I knew. I knew then this was about, yeah, a good three weeks ago or even better, probably a month ago. And I knew that this is going to be happening earlier this year. The swarms are going to start coming earlier this year because the weather is so weird. So I start setting up all my traps all around the area, all around the city where I keep my traps at. I set up my traps out there on Freedom Acres and I left, got my boxes out here just set and ready. I unplugged them. You see that green? Uh, let me show you this. Let me show you this. 
you see that green material that that's nothing more than heater heater duct vent you know how you can cut it and, and filter your vent for your heater for your furnace that's all that is but i use that to plug in all the holes on all of my hives over the winter that way wax moths can't get in hive beetles can't get in and anything in there usually dies that i when i moved that green stuff this year it would have hive beetles all in front of it they're all dead so that stuff works i keep my hives closed i don't let nothing in and i don't let nothing out in some kind of way it dies off then when it start warming up this is what i get bees come from all over the place to do this for me i wish you know i don't care how great technology is it'll never do what the human eye can do say i just hatched 21 out of 24 chicks one was a duck first time hatching eggs so awesome one was a duck Happy, hey, happy Easter. Uh, who is that? Talvish, how you doing? Hey, out with Kai, how you doing this morning? Happy holidays to you. But this is this is what we do, family. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to make one of my easy traps. Okay. It's easy. Anybody can afford it. Everybody can afford it. And all I'm telling you is, when you try this method that I'm going to show you, you better, I ain't going to say you what you better do. You should be ready and prepared to be a beekeeper. I'm telling you that right now. You should be prepared to be a beekeeper because once it works and once you actually catch the bees, you're going to be like, now what do I do with them? You're going to have to work fast. I'm going to just tell you that for real, for real. You see them all going in. You don't see none of them coming out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put this because I can't see if this camera is still tripping or not. Let me see if this camera is still tripping. Everything is still fuzzy. I don't get it. I wish I could fix this, y'all. I really do. I want to leave it so it'll fix, but it just won't. Let me see. Man, I tell you. Sometimes you could do that and the camera will fix itself. But it won't. I did wipe my lens. I wiped it several times and that ain't that ain't hitting on nothing. So this is what I'm going to do. Oh, well, get out of my pores, family. Get out of my pores. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you all the way in. And I'm hoping. I'm just going to do it for a second so I can show you exactly what this looks like from my point of view because this camera ain't doing it and i can't see good enough to show you exactly what it's looking like okay here we go I don't know if I don't know if y'all can see that all right. Ooh, I'm gonna show you my nuts. Uh, <laughs> could everybody see that okay? Let me see. Let me see. Uh, would you be willing to give an online beekeeping class? I usually have a beekeeping uh, online beekeeping class every year. We didn't have it this year. Oh, 
open it. Open what? Would you? Oh, got that one. Open what, um, celestial body? If you recalibrate your phone, it will fix the fuzzy. I don't even know how I can do that. Let me see. What you mean recalibrate it? Because I sure would love to show y'all without doing all this weird 007 stuff. It didn't work. Let me try this. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. I'm going to try to recalibrate, as y'all say. There it go. Can y'all see me? Ha <laughs> ha. You was the first one I seen, puppy dog. Okay. We good now. We good in the hood. We good in the hood now. Okay. There we go. Now I can see what y'all see instead of me keep trying to do some weird stuff. Thank you for telling me to recalibrate it. I didn't. I, I'm so... I'm so excited I didn't even think about that. But this way, I can show you what I see. There we go. Perfect, perfect. More bees are coming than leaving. Do you see that? You don't see too many bees leaving. Let me, let me open this up a little for you so you will see. You don't see too many of these little ladies leaving. You see them coming here. The only reason they're leaving is to go back and tell mama, hey, the house is almost ready. You know, the moving truck is here and everything. So all we got to do now is get your luggage and bring you on to the house. That's the only reason they're going back to tell, give messages to the, to the main hive, the wild hive. To let them know it's almost time to leave. This is the only reason you see this many bees in here. They are cleaning this house before mama get home. That's right. They need to mop and sweep. <laughs> yeah, gang there, mom. You already know. They in there mopping and sweeping. Picking up their dirty clothes up off the floor and putting them in the washing machine. When mama come home, she better hear some vacuum cleaners going, some brooms sweeping, washing machine going, and somebody better be in there busting suds. That's what's going on right now. You're seeing, you're actually watching your childhood happen right here live and direct. Um, that's right. The meat better be out the freezer thawing out for dinner. She better come in and smell something cooking. Good morning, Mary Green. How you doing? Somebody need uh, need the mama, but I, I don't know what that one. Uh, yeah, so you see it, family. This is hot. Oh, my goodness. This, this is going to, I know they coming soon. You see this? Do you see it? I'm making sure do you see it. This is Easter. And that's what makes it all more exciting to me because they coming down here on Easter Sunday. I done got brand new chicks Easter morning. And now I got a swarm of bees. Can you turn the camera horizontally? No, I've already set it for, for this. So I'm sorry about that. When I, when I started this live stream, I was excited. And I just hit, when you just hit um, go live, this is kind of what you get. I didn't really set it. As a matter of fact, I ain't even going to lie to you. I haven't even set my monetization yet. I just cut, I just hit live. So right now, as we speak, I'm losing money. Is anybody interested in becoming a beekeeper? Look, look, I got bees down here. I'm going to show y'all something else cool, okay? You see this bee down here? 
checking out that hive down there? It's some bees that keep on going in and out of that hive down there at the end. You know what that is? That's two separate hives. I've caught about three different hives, all three different swarms at one time before. And this may not be any different. You see those bees checking out that hive. I'm going to tell you something about that. So your neighbors will kill you. Bees ain't going to be bothering with your neighbors. I promise you that. My neighbors are right here. And my neighbors is right here. My neighbors is right over there. These bees don't bother nobody. They don't bother nobody no more. Any other insect in this neighborhood. Mosquitoes and nothing else. See, that's the thing. We got we to gotta understand how this all works. And once you understand how it all works, you got to be like, hey, man, look. You know, I don't really care for your dog barking all night. You understand? Your dog bark all night long and never shut up every time a raccoon or a squirrel pass. I'm tired of hearing that. So you can't say you tired of just looking at my beehives or my bee might be coming to drink the water out your bird bath. I mean, it's, it's trash. You can't do that. And we've, we're, we're starting to make more. We're starting to make more excuses for things that ain't supposed to be natural. We're starting to make excuses why people can't do more natural things like be a beekeeper. Like, oh, yeah. Why is it a, a ordinance or a city law that you can't have a beehive? Man, get out of here, man. I don't want to live nowhere where those kind of rules exist. I just don't. Ooh, they are coming. I keep looking up in the sky because every time I look in the sky, I know that mama is coming. Oh, my goodness. Look, they filling that hole up. Once you start seeing that. Yeah, look at them. Fill it up. Say so they they try to put. Uh, try to put a cold into normalcy. Right. Right. You can't do that. Happy Easter, uh, Craig Jack. Grateful Garden say, I read that if you if your neighbor has a pool, it could be it could bother them. Well, I read that if your neighbor has a pool, it could bother you if you have children. You can't control nature. You understand? If your if your neighbor has a pool, that don't give them rights over what you can do and what you can't do in your yard. Think about it. So that's like saying, okay, your neighbor bought a Lamborghini. So now, you know, you can't park your car outside because it's embarrassing your Jeep. That's nah. If your neighbor has a pool, that's their business. That doesn't change anything that you can do in your yard, your land that you pay for. You didn't you didn't say, hey, don't put no pool up. I got kids over here. My kids can climb your fence and jump in your pool. See how dumb that sound? Yeah, so let me see something. Yeah, that's what I thought. So yeah, there you go. Um, you can't you can't just pick and choose rules according to another person's lifestyle. Uh, can, uh Camille P said, "I have a pool and never had a problem. I won't take. I won't pretend that the bees won't try to drink some of your pool water. I'm not gonna pretend that that won't happen. Just like." I won't pretend that the bees won't try to be in your bird bath, but you cannot blame nature for being nature. So if my if my nosy children jump your gate and drown in your pool, that is not your fault. Do you understand? That's that's between me and my children and their disciplinary uh, situation and their curiosity that just happened you can't just be blaming ah, I, i'm not i'm not rocking with that one and that's the problem why we're getting away from more and more natural things that we should be doing in life we should be eating in life we should be practicing in life because we 
are making rules and regulations for artificial situations. We keep making, we make more thumbs up rules for artificial rules and regulations than we do for natural preservation. The rules for natural preservation, we keep thumbing all of them laws down. Like, ah, oh, no, nah, we got to run this oil pipeline through, through this national forest. Cut the national forest down. So we can run this oil gas pipeline is definitely going to leak and spill fuel into the earth and poison the soil. We we give that a thumbs up because it's going to make money. But when it comes to bee preservation, animal preservation, state park pres preservation, what happens to us? Nah, no, thank you. We don't want to have nothing to do with that. Uh, that. That doesn't make enough money. As a matter of fact, preservation costs money and we don't have the funding or the budget. And next thing you know, screw your bees, screw your birds, screw your chickens. You want chickens in your backyard and they don't make no less or no more noise than a barking dog all day long. You know what I'm saying? But there are, you can only have five chickens in your yard in certain places in the woods, 100 miles away from each neighbor, all that garbage. But your dog can come and doo doo on somebody else's lawn whenever it feels like it. Whenever that dog got to drop a log, it's okay for that dog to come. There is no laws in order and in place to say make it illegal for your uh, neighbor's dog or somebody else's dog to come doo-doo on your grass. Is it? Absolutely not. Your, the neighbor's dog can come and doo-doo in your yard until y'all... Now, when the law does kick in, it's when you go kick your neighbor's ass and then turn around <laughs> and then turn around and you get assault charges. Let me see. Uh, let me see. We literally need we literally need the best to survive, literally. This, I'm the bees to survive. I'm sorry. This son, oh, you did say best, but I know what you meant. The bees to survive. We do. And people don't even think. Let me tell y'all something. If these little and if these little creatures right here die off, oh, we don't got to worry about global warming. We don't got to worry about pollution. We don't got to worry about any of that chemicals. If these little creatures die, we die. We keep thinking we the top of the food chain. And I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. I'm, I'm going to put this out here. We keep saying we the top of the food chain and we make all the rules. We make all the laws and stuff. Now, I just want to touch on something. And I know people people going to try to hit me with the with the biblical scriptures and say, yeah, God gave us rule over and dominion over all the animals and the creatures. OK, I, I just want to touch on something. I'll, I know what what it says. My first question is, who did he make first? What did he make first, right? He made the animals first. Here's another one for you. If all of this stuff falls out of order, all of these animals fall out of order, it affects us directly. We can't function or survive. If, if these bees die, we, we, are, we will perish. If the whales, if the algae and the coral reefs die, we, we will die. If all of this doesn't work, this is a gigantic filtration system. Everything depends on everything. Everything works together in harmony. I'm going to tell you something else. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of Liz's philosophy. Each and every one of the last, I, 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 listen to me close. Because I need to get this each and every last. Maybe I'll show you the bees while I say this. Each and every last one of these bees are individual creatures. They are all individual creatures. But they all work in unison like they only have one brain. Like octopus and its tentacles. All of them. They're all doing separate things, but they all are on one accord. They are all thinking about and doing the same thing, but different things all at the same time. 
like they're of one body. You get what I'm saying? If the queen dies, which is the actual head and the brain of the hive, this hive will die. If they cannot try to produce another queen in time, this entire hive, I don't care how many boxes high I got, I don't care if it's 10 boxes stacked on top of each other, this entire ecosystem will die if, if the one queen that's running this whole thing dies. Right. So each and every bee is an individual creature, but they all operate in unison as one. What on God's green earth make us think that we're any different than them bees? We're all different. We're all individual creatures. We're all individual animals. We're, we got all individual ideas. The reason why the human race is failing is because we do not operate in unison. We do not all have the same goal in life, which is life and preservation and love for each other. Everything that we do is for our own selves. So in a way, we kind of building our own God. We're building our own queen. You understand what I'm saying? That's what we do. And that's why we're perishing. And that's why it's so hard to maintain life. That's why life is so hard, because we all think that we're separate from one another. We think you think you don't have nothing to do with me because you a thousand miles away and I'm over here. So you like you white. I'm black. You Mexican. I'm black. So you think since you live over there, you a different color, different race. You speak a different language. You think that you're different than me. And that's why our hive as human beings keep failing. We keep failing because we all think that we are own individual gods. And that's the problem right there. We, we screw, that's where we screw up. We're all supposed to be working in unison. And I think the head, the queen, the king of the hive is God Almighty himself. And that's the part we're not. If he fails to give us favor, we will fail. And that right there is the part that everybody, we talk a mean game, but we don't do nothing about it. He is supposed to be the head of our life. And every time we wake up and go to sleep, that's be the first thing on your mind, the last thing on your mind. And be believe it or not, it ain't. So right there, being a beekeeper, becoming a beekeeper, funny enough, brings you closer to your very own humanity. If you sit and watch a beehive all day like I'm doing now, I've been out here for about a good half hour and a half now. If you sit and watch these bees, how they work, how they communicate with one another, and then once they communicate with each other the way they're doing it, and then once you open this hive up to see what all that little communication and working together did, you see their successes. They have tons of food stores. Tons of medication, tons of everything, tons of new babies, healthy. The hive is healthy. Everything is strong. The queen is strong and laying eggs. Everything in this ecosystem works, flows flawlessly. And you want to know the best part about it, y'all? The best part about it is no enemy can cross that front line. When your hive is strong, I don't care whether it's a lizard, a frog, a snake, a bird, a mouse, nothing. It will destroy anything that crosses that front line when you, when you try to mess with a strong hive. When you try to mess with a strong hive, with a strong queen and a strong leader in front of it, nothing can cross that threshold. And that is exactly how we should be dealing with our very own humanity. We don't even try to build our hive up. Everybody want a hive of their own. You know, I've seen neighborhoods. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Nacha Kemp. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Happy, happy Easter. I've seen neighborhoods. And I think this, this the neighborhood I live in is one of them. You will have a neighborhood and there will be about 50 swimming pools. How many people have ever seen that before? 
each and every house in some fancy neighborhoods, you will see, you will count no less than 50 swimming pools. And they could be right next door to one another. One, two, three in a row, five in a row. And they all have swimming pools. Each house got two children or something, you know. Does that make any sense to you? That's because everybody want to become their own castle, their own doctor and their own king and queen of their own village or world. That is where we mess up. That's where we mess up. That don't even make that don't make no kind of sense. Don't you think it would been been a little bit smarter for each neighbor to chip in? And build a community pool. If anything, right? If anything, pick out a spot in the neighborhood and everybody, you won't even have to spend as much to build your own pool. What you could do is chip in with the rest of the neighbors and build a full community pool. So everybody can swim. Everybody can chip in on the maintenance. Everybody, right? Nah, you have 50. I, I know on my one in the two blocks that I'm dealing with right now, there's at least six swimming pools. In-ground swimming pools. With nobody in them. And I think that's where we're, we're losing because we don't work in unison with one another. At all. Let me see. Community is what we lost from we, we, we to me, me, me. Exactly. So every pool owner I know hates the monthly bill. It's like another car payment. Yes. Let me tell you something. You know how many times I wanted to put a pool in this ground at this house? And every year, every year for the last damn 10 years, 11 years, I've been like, I'm going to get up and put a pool in this year. And then I started looking at how much it costs, how much is the maintenance. Because that one cost ain't it. You never, that money st never stopped flowing out of your pocket. Just like let water flow in your pool. That money never stopped leaking out of your pocket. Uh, good morning, Laura's Garden. How you doing? Miss Native Cherokee said, no one, no one helps us grow our fruit tree, but they want some. There you go. The same thing. Same thing. Samantha B says, community starts with a strong family unit. Once the family unit was collectively fractured there goes the community amen to that happy easter amen to that say don't do it lead no pool no i ain't got no i ain't got no plans on getting no swimming pool that's just that's just money especially with the, the climate of the world today i stopped thinking about a swimming pool when 2020 hit like that was the last thing on my mind the only thing i would even even think to put a swimming pool in for is water uh, to be able to collect water but I'm going to do that with my pond on Freedom Acres I'm not even thinking about no swimming pool a pond replenishes itself what's going on learning to grow my own man it's good to see you brother it is really good to see you um CXM says existing pools regularly kill house purchases. Lenders hate them. Absolutely correct. People think that a swimming pool will boost your value of your home. It does sometimes. But most people don't want a pool. I remember back in the 80s and the 70s, everybody wanted a pool, you know. But now people just don't like them. They fill them in and everything. Maybe an all-natural pool. No, maybe a pond. When you say all-natural pool, I don't even understand what that is. Or are you talking about a cement cement pool where you got a bunch of little weeds and, and reeds and stuff in it? Just dig a pond. I saw one bee down there while I was talking and I 
I thought I seen her fanning, but it would have been more than just one B fanning, letting people know that the queen is in there. So, so far, they're still just cleaning it out. What here's another way that you know that the bees have actually moved in into the hive and I'm going to show you up close and personal. If you watch my short from from yesterday that I released this morning, you will notice something. There are little yellow pouches on, on their hind legs. That's pollen in their pollen basket. Once you see once you want to know if the if the bees are really in for good and they're established. You start seeing them bring things into the hive. They're bringing in pollen. When you see those yellow or orange pollen baskets on their hind legs, that lets you know they're bringing in the groceries to put away. Mama done went to the store, spent all her money, and they are bringing in the groceries. Right now, I can smell them. I can smell them, y'all. They. This smells like wherever they're coming from, this is another indication that they're coming from a wild hive somewhere. They're bringing in honey stores and it smells like doo-doo. What that smell is, is goldenrod. That flower goldenrod. Goldenrod honey smells literally like dog crap. If you have never smelled goldenrod honey, um, here's the funny thing about goldenrod honey. It's some of the most delicious honey. It's actually one of my favorites. It tastes like caramel. Sniffing it though, you don't want to smell it. You do, the, the, the smell will make it so you don't want to taste it. Did you build your hives? I built a couple of them that I have destroyed. I got one left. I think I got, I got two. I got two that I built. Uh, nope, nope, that ain't it. I think I have destroyed them already, but I build them in a hurry. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. That's my construction hive. See that dumb little hole on the bottom? That board at the bottom is stapled to this whole box. Okay. And I drilled that hole. I made this box for an emergency because this is the box I usually take with me to go catch a swarm. If you go back in my beekeeping videos, you always see this box. You always see it when I go to catch a swarm. The only the reason why I did that is because once I catch the swarm and get them in the box, it's easy for me to close that hole up. I could put a wine cork in it or put some duct tape over it and I ain't got to worry about the bees escaping. The bottom board is attached to it permanently so I don't have to worry about that falling off. And all I got to do is put a lid on it, put some tape in front of that hole and drive away. So this box I made myself. And then you see how raggedy, look at all the other handles, how nice they are. These are the ones I bought, those nice handles. And look at this, this hack job that I did with my router. I tried, you know, all you need to do is be able to pick the damn box up. So, yeah, I made that one. And the rest of them, they were so uh, infested over the years. I just finally just burned them up. They was coming apart anyway. Say, speaking of digging a pond, I am trying to make a land uh, plan and I know I want to dig a pond. Have no idea where to start. Do you have any idea uh, what that process looks like? Nope. I, I, you know what? You can go online and check it out. I'm, I'm be honest with you, family. I, I kind of don't even really want to talk about land no more. I know it's a little discouraging to everybody, but I kind of want to keep my land situation to myself because if I wish I could show everybody how weird that got, that got super weird, super, super, super weird. And I kind of, I was like, damn, I thought it would help people or encourage people. And it just did the abs absolute opposite. I was, I got attacked a couple times about it and it just got stupid. And I was like, well, you know what? I got my land and I'm not even going to worry about what the hell everybody else want to do. I don't even understand.
say, I think it's good to share and good to keep some things. I don't understand what you're saying, uh, G Alexa. Uh, Miss Native Cherokee say you still did great. I, it's functional. <laughs> it's functional. That's all I can say. It works. You don't need much. Um, let me see. Something you need to keep close to. Say that's disappointing, Led. You telling me. It's disappointing to me too. It's, it's, it's sad to me that I can't share my journey because of all the weirdos. Say I think you encourage most, but some people are miserable. That's their business. I don't even try to, I don't even want, I told y'all, I'm, I'm detoxing. I'm tired of trying to figure people out and what's going through their head, whether it's envy, jealousy, hatred, love, peace, I don't care no more. I have a family to protect and I can't be worrying about what, what everybody else thinks of you. And it won't, they don't even know you and what they think of you. For whatever reason, they think it. Ah. Uh, that's not my mission here. Say crazy how haters come for you when they could just mind their own business. That's boring. Minding your own business is boring. And people need to be entertained. And right now I'm at a point where if grown people don't know what they should be doing for real, for real, I, can't, I have no control over that. Say, I have friends live off grid and the husband dug a 15 foot deep pond. They zip line into it and are stocking it full for fishing. It could totally be done. I believe it. D Spencer say, I don't understand, brother Led. I don't either. Ms. Native Cherokee say other people can get scary asking personal questions. Boss Lady says, yikes, I hate to hear that it got weird for you. Keep up the good work and do what you've been doing for yourself and your family. I am disappointed, but I understand that miserable people suck. Yes, I do. I, I, I totally agree. And I, all I can say is um, I, I, I can tell people, I, I pray and I hope that everybody's getting themselves together and... I really do from my heart. Hope everybody does purchase land. But you're going to have to find your own journey. It is plenty of people on YouTube and all the other social media platforms that you can follow that, that do it. And I hope that that will help you. Um, so I, I have appreciated you openly shared over these years protect lady absolutely that's that's my mission that is my mission does that mean you won't be showing videos from freedom acres anymore see they are jealous hiding it hiding Hiding it don't make sense. I don't care what people think. Yeah, you care what people think when they threaten you and your family or then your friends and, and your family start acting weird. You do. You will care. It's best that people just don't know. Listen, everybody don't got to know everything about you. They just don't. They don't. And, I, and I'm starting to understand that. Frankly, I'm I'm be honest with you. That was my wife's intention. My wife did not want me to show nobody or tell nobody that we had freedom makers whatsoever. She said, no, that's not a good idea. Uh-oh, family. I think the queen is home. I think mama is in there. Look at this. You see those two bees fanning right there. See them? They got their butts in the air. You see them with their butts in the air and, and fanning their wings. Oh, wait a minute. Where did I go? Right there. Their butts is in the air and they fanning their wings. You see her? Right there. It was more than just her. That's either telling everybody that the queen is home 
and in the box or is telling everybody to come on. You see it right there, butt in the air, waving the wings like she just don't care. I was looking down at the bottom box to see if I see anybody down there. Oh, the swarm is about to happen. It's going on. It's about to go down. If she ain't already in this box, if she ain't already in this box, she's on her way. I'm looking in the air to see there are a lot of there are a lot of bees in the air but not it ain't looking swarm worthy yet let me get back in here uh thank you for always sharing to help us learn and understand how we can do and be better we appreciate you well thank you i appreciate that uh so you have been a you have been a, a light for me to know I can do it. As a single mom, I am encouraged by you and protect your tribe. I am still on the path which you encourage. And you know what? We can be on the same path in, in secret. And it's probably better that way. You know? Amp, get out of there. Stop eating weird stuff. Say, I'm grateful for the things that I have learned being a newcomer to your channel. And you know something? It's, we still all going to be learning stuff together. It's just the certain things I, I can't I can't share anymore. And to, like I said before, my wife was like, I don't she was not with it. She was not going for it. And that's why you didn't see her that much. When when Lady Led is on Freedom Makers with me, you don't see her. She'll be there while I'm on camera. and Y'all won't even know because she just like I just don't I'm just not feeling it. And now I'm starting to understand. Sometimes, fellas, listen to your wife. Honestly, they got that, they got that sixth sense, that intuition that lets, lets them know, man, this ain't a good idea. It's the truth. She felt, she felt this coming. She felt it. And she here's the funny thing about my wife. That, and I'm going, I'm going to say about. Most women, honestly, they have this, they have, they do have a, a power. A, women do have a power that here's the difference to me as a man. I'm just, I'm on outside looking in and, and I'm, I have sisters, I had a mom, I had aunts and cousins. And I'm just going to tell you from my point of view, women have a certain power over situations over men and over situations and the only difference i think is some women just don't know how to use their powers that's all to it i've seen men do some of the dumbest stuff over women i've seen men delete one another over a woman that ain't think about either one of them i've seen women persuading and, and not in a harsh way in a romantic and loving way my wife for instance man i hey she she say the right thing the right kind of way, man. I'll be ready to you know go go knock over a Seven <laughs> Eleven. You know, <laughs> you know you want that chili dog with cheese or no cheese? I'll be ready. Women have women have a power that's strong, and we we don't think about it anymore. You know, and so they have that intuition. When something ain't right, me and us, we, we think they don't be knowing when we cheating and stepping out and trying to go out and be cute and whatever out in the street. We, we be thinking we got them licked, man. They already they knew that weeks ago. They know who you messing with. They know where you been. And this is before GPS. This is before cell phone. They know who you messing with, where you been, how many times you been there, uh, what they name is, address, what they mama name is. They name, they know all of that just by their intuition. They know what your sack smells like when you leave and you didn't, she didn't even sniff you, man. When they marry you, when a woman marry a man, you know, they say once you, um, once you lay down, you become like kind of part of them. You leave your DNA, y'all swap DNA. I believe in that. I do. And I think if the more partners you got, the more problems you got, because it's certain things. That's why you every blue moon, 
a thought of somebody in your past comes back. It ain't because you miss them. It ain't because you like them. It ain't because you love them. It's because, man, y'all swapped DNA some time ago along the journey. And every blue moon, that, look, look at that bee right there pulling out that web. See her? See her? She pulling out that webbing? I told you. They're cleaning it up. You see them pulling that webbing out right there. Don't get it twisted. She ain't stuck. She's trying to fly that out. And the other bees, ah, she just flew it away. They are here to stay. I'm sorry, y'all. That was just, I just wanted to make sure y'all understood that it don't matter whether you got wax, wax moths, hive beetles. If a, if a hive is strong enough and they see what they want, they'll handle the rest. I just proved it to you live. It's dead frogs and dead lizards and stuff down there on the ground and dead wax moths because they in there housing. They cleaning it for real. Y'all going to see more stuff come out over, over this week. You're going to start seeing more little creatures down there dead. And what they usually do, they'll either drop it on the end of this porch or they'll fly it away. Old dead bees and everything. They'll fly it away and drop it off somewhere else away from the hive. But yeah, family, my wife told me, you know, let's keep freedom to ourselves. And I said, you know, this will really help inspire other people. And there's so many people online helping inspire. I think the more this was my intention. My intention was the more people that look like me can show that we can achieve this goal, the better. And it just didn't work out that way. It just didn't work out that way. So I just, I, I leave it alone. Leave it, leave it alone. Some stuff you got to know, know when to walk away, know when to run. I say, uh, Led, that was cool. Uh, after, after jump, one married, you two become, when I missed something. I'm glad y'all here so y'all can actually see this. There's there's some webbing they pulling out down on that bottom, on that bottom bunk. See it? I mean that bottom entrance. See it? Right down there. See that webbing right there at the very bottom? That wasn't there before. They getting that stuff out of there. They coming home. Do I have any questions? Because I ain't going to keep you all, all all day here. I know this swarm is they about to drop. I thought they would be here by 9 o'clock, but clearly not. And the other bee that was... Oh, she's still up there waving, telling people to come in. Okay, I thought she was gone. Any questions before I go, y'all? And I'm sorry for my morning Easter rant. I just wanted to, I don't know. Ladies have their intuition in, and this is one of them times I just should have listened to my wife and kept, kept, uh, kept that to myself. Hey, grown with husband, how you doing, my sister? Good to see you. t will say, your intention with sharing the journey was right. Negative forces got in the way, and usually that's how it goes. Normally, I don't care. Normally, how do you get rid of wasps? I don't know. I'm not a wasp, wasp keeper at all. Look, they pulling out more webbing. Wait, they pulling out more webbing. You can see them right there. See them? They cleaning this hive out from infestation. When people keep saying, oh, if you got wax moths, this, you need to burn your hives up and it's get rid of them. You got hive beetles, burn up the hive. It ain't no good no more. Do y'all see what's happening right here? That's the webbing that the wax moths make. And they are removing it physically. The same thing that can destroy them, their hives when they're weak. The enemy can only just look at it. Look at her. Go on, baby. Fly away. See that? Did y'all see that? 
They cut out another piece of that webbing and, fl and flew it up out of here. This will teach you about your own humanity. See? What, what is... Uh, what is the other scripture? Somebody tell me about keeping your keeping your house clean. Clean your own house. Right? Ain't you supposed to keep your home clean, meaning everything in your life? Clean up your own house before you go fumbling around with somebody else's. Get your house in order. These bees are showing you scripture right now. These bees are literally showing you scripture right now. They are getting their house, house in order so they can function properly as one unit under God. And they can't even read, I don't believe. Let's be honest. Y'all witnessing, y'all are literally witnessing scripture right now, live and direct from a hive full of bees. Not, not a human being, but from bees. You are seeing what we're supposed to be doing as human beings, as brothers and sisters in the faith. We are seeing bees are teaching us better than half of the pastors dancing across the stage. That man to go on and put on a $300 suit or better, $1,000 suits, $500 tie, $700 shoes, and dance across the stage and teach you a whole, say a whole bunch of sweet old things. And I'm learning the exact same thing that that man going to hold you in that church for six hours. I'm learning the exact same thing right here from a group of bees. From a group of bees. If you sit here long enough, you will start to remember scripture. If you know scripture now, like again, I keep telling people, I'm not fully versed in the word. I am studying. I am studying. I am a student just like everybody else. But every time I see bees do certain things and chickens do certain things, it reminds me of certain scriptures because they are actually living it. You know how we always talk about some, you know, oh, I'm living in the word. Are we, though? Are we? This is a natural, pro, naturally programmed evidence of creatures truly living in the word of the Lord. Showing us everything we're supposed to be doing. You know what? They ain't watching TV. They ain't off eating junk food. They ain't driving around wasting time. They ain't just flying around because they just learned they can fly and they ain't got nothing better to do. They ain't off getting in trouble and just flying over to other hives and doing crazy stuff. No, they are putting in that work. And they are getting their house in order. Because when they get their house in order, that is the only way that they can welcome their queen. And when we get our house in order, it's easy for the king to shine down and come down and speak through us. When your house is in order, he don't got to go through the clutter. He ain't got to step over stuff coming to the house. He ain't got to step down in no, no garbage, no trash. Nope. He come straight into your house in the front door. He know where you at. He smell your food cooking in the kitchen. He know you in there reading. He can come and get right to you. He don't got to go through the garbage that you got in your life. He don't got to um, <clears throat> step over the trash people that you keep around your circle. Nope. Getting your house in order and cleaning your house is an easy way for the Lord to find you. And these bees right here are showing you. They are getting their house in order to make it easy for the queen to show up. If you become a beekeeper, you will literally see scripture in bees. I know that sounds crazy. But if you sit here long enough, you will, whether you want to or not. Whether you want to or not. So again, family, I don't want to keep y'all. I'm just out here waiting on the queen just like they are. She definitely is not in there. Because they will be fanning for way longer than this. Just one bee fanning? Nah. 
They cleaning up. And I can smell them bringing all that honey. That's what I smell. Ooh, that, it is stinking. That goldenrod honey came from last fall. Stank so bad. That's exactly what I'm smelling right now. That funk. If you have never smelled goldenrod honey, ask any beekeeper about what it smells like. It literally smells almost like dog crap. Yeah, it's that good funk. You right about that. It's that good funk. Because it is actually my favorite. It tastes like caramel. Like caramel. I don't know another way to, to say it. Lady Led don't like it because she can't get past the smell. Say, Mr. Led, once the bees are done, will you repair the holes? No, no. What do you mean repair them? Repair them? No, no. Those, you see this top hole? The top one up here? They done that. They chewed through that and made that hole, the last hive that was here. For whatever reason, they did that. There's nothing to repair. The bottom hole you have to leave open so they can get in and out. But me personally, I don't like interfering in what they're naturally doing. I really truly don't. Because every time I go to poking around trying something new, they fail. It's best for me. Look, look over here. Look over here. Let me show you something. See that bee right there? Checking out that other hive? She from another hive. She ain't following these girls over here. She's checking out this other hive. See it? See, I think I might, I might have a twofer. See all them checking out these other hives over here? Because let me, let me, let me explain something to you. <clears throat> when when I was watching this one weeks ago, well, about a week or so ago, you can see the difference in the bees. There are really, really, really dark orange bees. There are really, really, really light orange bees, light yellowish bees. And then you have um, these all black honeybees. They're all black. They look all black. They have more black on them than the yellow or the orange. So what I noticed was three different kinds of bees trying to fight for this hive. So over the last couple of weeks, they were out here fighting. And what they were fighting for, because it wasn't nobody in there, was who is going to get this hive. So what I told my wife is, I think we got three contestants trying to get, get this one hive. So that's why I made sure I had three hives out here set up and ready for them. It's actually four. It's actually four. This is one whole hive. That's one, three boxes. And that green on up is a whole nother hive. And then I got that one. The reason I did that is because if I have multiple swarms coming from multiple hives, they all got somewhere to go. And I won't lose out on that. I actually have, let me show you something. I actually have a beehive right well, I can't, the sun is in my face. I got a beehive right there. I got two beehives on my back porch. I got a beehive in the front yard and I got a bee trap on my front tree. And the reason I do that is just in case I got swarms, I got wild bees all around this neighborhood. And some come from that way, some come from that way, some come from that way. Here's the funny thing about these bees, they're coming from down the creek. They're coming from this way. I can see them when they fly off and come going, going and coming. So when either one of these bees come, they smell this going on. They smell all of my equipment. They smell old comb, old honey. They smell my boxes. They smell the traps. And they all come from all directions and fight over territory until one of them win. And clearly these dark orange ones, these dark orange bees won the contest. Usually, the really dark, the really dark 
all black honeybees usually win. But it looks like the dark orange ones uh, won out this time. The one I seen flying around that other hive over there was the dark, I mean the light yellow one. See, you can see it right there. Oh my God. Y'all ain't gonna be able to see her. But the light yellow ones are still coming around. The light yellow ones still need somewhere to go and they're ready to swarm. The temperatures won't be dropping too much more after, after yesterday. And now it's time. Look, I see them just pulled out a dead bee. Let me see. Somebody said I'm running a five-star resort. Ah, uh, this is more like the Econo Lodge, but, you know, we keep it clean, though. <laughs> see, I've always wondered how beekeepers know the varieties and flavors of the honey. Buckwheat is my all-time favorite. Um, Once you start tasting it, and smelling it and you go to different um, gatherings and, and festivals and stuff like that, you start tasting and smelling different things that you're aware of from your own bee yard. And then when you go to a commercial, like when you go to the state fair, those beekeepers are commercial beekeepers. They're the big boys. They know everything. And once they, you say, mm, what do this one taste like? Oh, that's, that's goldenrod. That's, that's, that thing stank right there. But it's delicious. So that's how I knew this was goldenrod. And when goldenrod starts um, starts blooming in the fall, late summer and fall, that's when the honey in your hive starts smelling like something is in there dead. Every time, every year, all of these hives smell like somebody just dropped a whole pile of dog crap inside of them. During the early spring, it smells like the honey that you're used to smelling, like the clover honey. It smells, it smells fruity. It smells super sweet and fruity, like strawberries and cherries and, and apples. It's that fruity, super fruity smell, grapes. That's what the honey or the hives kind of smell like in the early spring. The late fall, they start getting a little funky. Say, so were they coming from down the river? Yes, these are coming from down the river. And some of my neighbors even told me, hey, it's a hive down here on the trail. You might want to come check it out. And I always tell them, I don't know where they keep telling me these different hives are. I've never went to go see them, but I know I, they'll, be, they'll be coming to see me soon. They're up in trees. I'm not going to bother them in no tree. All I got to do is set, set out the bait and set out the traps, and they'll be coming. Do I have any questions whatsoever, family? We we coming up on that 90 minute mark. Thank you, exquisite. I just wanted to show share some of my excitement this morning. And because not only is it um is Easter, but man, I, I've had a couple of miracles happen this morning already that really lifted my spirits because. I have gotten to a place in my life that I don't know what I would do without a year having bees. Honestly, every beekeeper knows this. As much work as you have to put in, at first it's a it's a it's a break when you your bees die out. You like, whoo, good. You kind of part of you is like good, and part of you is like, dang, my bees is dead. You know, but. Going through a, a season with no bees is a really, really weird feeling. It's almost like your kids done left for college and you an empty nester. You don't know what to do with yourself. You, it's, I can't make that up. It's a weird feeling. I, I guess it got to be the kind of feeling um, of not having chickens. Same thing. I did both. I had a season with no bees. I had a season with no chickens. And it's one of the weirdest feelings I've ever had and coming this coming this year I will have a year with no kids living in my house my son is going off to college soon so I won't even know what to do with myself that's why I got a dog <clears throat> and I gotta be honest with you too on something else it gotta be 
now that I'm starting to understand uh, puppy dogology, <laughs> puppy dogology, I think I understand now. See, God wakes you up when you think you when you think you woke. You ain't woke. You ain't woke up until he feel like waking you up. He's the alarm clock in your life and people don't even realize it. You think you know everything and he'll remind you that you don't every time. Every time you think you know everything, he will remind you, ah, 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 that's my job. Every time, every time you think you number one at something, he's, ah, 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 ah. Stay in your place. That's my job. Every time. I did not want a dog. <clears throat> I did not want a dog. Y'all know that for years. This wasn't new. For years, I've been telling y'all, stop talking to me about dogs. I don't want one. And here I am. My daughter came over yesterday and she said she was going to take, take this puppy with her. And I said, no, you are not. Oh, I'm going to take her for a walk. No, you ain't. <laughs> I done took her for a walk. Well, I'm going to take her out to use the bathroom. I already did that. I bought her a little house. I bought her a little bed. Oh, Dad, I, I'm, I'm going to just take her with me. We about to go to the, no, you, we about to go to the park. Well, you go get you another dog. I can't make this up. My wife and my daughter was looking at me like he done lost his mind. He done lost his whole mind. Not half of it. He, his whole mind is missing. Don't take this dog out of here. <laughs> Don't take this dog up out of here. I want, listen, I, I'm going to court to get full custody <laughs> of the dog. You done abandoned the dog. You done mess around abandoning the dog. So, no, nah, if you, you want visitation rights, you can come over here. You can sit with her for an hour. i give you an hour, okay? I will give you one hour, and it needs to be supervised. Don't take her up out of here. Sit there next to her on the couch. Don't. She, we busy. We watching YouTube videos. You got to come when I tell you to come. You just don't pop up. You got to call first and make an appointment to see her. Look, ain't that, ain't that right, Peach? Ain't that right? Yeah, she gave you up for adoption. She gave you up for adoption. So, you know, nah, you got to make an appointment. And if you, hey, you go to court, you won't fit, you won't have custody. You better have a good lawyer. You better have a good lawyer, cause I, I'm I'm fighting for my right to puppy. Not, <laughs> not fight for your right to party. I'm fighting for my right to puppy. Okay, so, so I understand. I understand how it must feel for some people not to have have a a dog in the house. Like once one of your dogs pass away or something happened to it, and then you turn around and get another dog in the house i used to think that that's like oh they, they must be crazy that's see they just addicted to dogs no i get it i apologize for my for my foolishness i apologize for my ignorance did you hear what i said family i apologize for my ignorance i already i already repented to the father for my nonsense now I'm, I'm apologizing to all of y'all dog lovers, animal lovers. I'm just say dog lover. I love animal. I apologize sincerely from my heart because I get it. I get it. I do. I get it. You know, when you start getting older and you, I, I guess, I don't know what I'm going through. They call it the midlife crisis. I might be, I don't know. But you know what, like my wife say, it's better than going, leaving home, finding some little 19-year-old girl, being a sugar daddy, buying a Corvette, and wearing skinny jeans. It's, <laughs> it's better. If this is how I'm going to go through my 50s is being more compassionate and understanding, I think I can handle that. That ain't hurting nobody, right? I'm going to try to be a little bit more understanding of of the human condition because me i'm a realist and some stuff i don't got time to keep trying to trying to make make sense and now that i'm kind of retired i'm kind of like i ain't got nothing to do but think about trying to how to 
make stuff make sense, I guess. Some stuff just don't. And I'm not going to waste my time on it, but for the most part, I think I, I think I get this dog thing, though. And again, from the bottom of my heart, I apologize to all the people that I told you, hell no, I ain't getting no dog. Because, look, I got egg on my face right now, right? I'm looking like a whole fool. What did I say? I ain't going to let no dog lick me. Didn't I say that? Ugh, y'all let dogs lick you? Didn't I say that? I don't figure something out about the whole dog licking thing because they think you are a dog. I've been doing research, by the way. They think you are the alpha dog. They think you are the top dog. So that's how they treat the top dog, the one that feeds them, the one that protects them. That's how they do. That's their communication. They're communicating with you that they respect you and you are the top dog and you eat first. That's what that's what that is. It's communication. And I used to think dogs licking you was just gross and ain't no reason for it. But now I understand that's how they communicate. When she licked me on my hand, that means she want to be petted. Soon as I start petting her, she stopped. If she wants you to keep doing it, she'll lick me one time, lick me a and pet her again. She cool. She can't talk human talk. So she's communicating me with the only way she know how to communicate with me. And I'm, I've had her just, just a couple of weeks and I'm already figuring this stuff out. So I can't even imagine what y'all know and been having dogs for years. Y'all know all of this already, right? I'm just, I feel, I feel like I, I feel stupid in a way. It's the feeling of when people say, I've never had a garden, I've never had bees, I've never had chickens. But once you get bees, a garden, and chickens, you like, I've wasted all my life staying away from this on purpose. I've wasted my life staying away from this for nonsensical things that I thought I knew about this situation. And now you fall in love with beekeeping. You fall in love with raising chickens. And I guess that's how I kind of feel about this little dog. So much so that I'm looking for, um, what is that thing called? A, a little French bulldog, but it's another one. Not a pug. I don't want one of them. I want a boy so she can have some company. Um, and I don't want them, I want them to be fertile. I don't want them to be spayed or neutered and all that stuff. I don't want they, they, uh, sack cut, um. What is this other one, man? It look it looks like it looks like a French bulldog, but it's not. It's called something else. It looks like a French bulldog, but it's not a pug. That's what I want. If anybody know what that dog is, put it in the comments for me. A French bulldog. It looks like a French bulldog, but it's something else. And it looks just oh 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 oh. Some kind of terrier. Not a rat terrier, not a rat terrier. It's some kind of terrier that look a Boston Terrier. That's it. Thank you. Who said that? Uh, Morish. Thank you. It's a it's a Boston Terrier. I either want a French Bulldog or a Boston Terrier, and I'm looking for one. I'm not even playing. I'm not playing at all. I'm looking for one, and. As soon as I get one, I will take you on that journey. If I find somebody that tells me here on YouTube, because I would prefer to buy one from one of my YouTube family members. If I find, if y'all know, y'all know y'all have one, I will travel to come and see you, depending on how far it is, of course. I will travel to come and meet my new Boston Terrier. That's what I really want. I want a Boston Terrier. And I, she'll have like a little husband or something going on. Because as little as she is, she is not a puppy. I call her puppy. She is not a puppy. Matter of fact, come to find out, she has had, she had her first, her first puppy. She was pregnant. She had her first puppy and it didn't survive. So they say usually that first litter don't really do well. But now she is really, really, she should be ready now. So I want... And it ain't got to be no pure blood. I, I ain't about to become no um, no breeder. I don't think. I'm not even going to say that. 
I'm not gonna say anything anymore. What I ain't gonna do. I might start breeding French poodle, French French bulldogs and Boston Terriers. I don't know what's on my next chapter of life. I don't know, but I'm looking for them. So I'm gonna show y'all this one last time, cause it seems like more and more bees is coming, and then I'm gonna usher myself on up out of here. Okay, everybody, enjoy your holiday, enjoy your Sunday, enjoy your Easter Sunday. Spend time with family. Tell folks you love them. Give some folks a hug. And you just never know. That'll keep a few people on this planet a little longer. You understand? It just will. Some people just need, need a hug, man. You don't know how many people is out there thinking about removing themselves from this existence. This morning, they woke up like, today I'm going to do it. Today I'm getting rid of myself. Every... It's so many people out here that you think you know their life and you think you know what they're going through. You don't. You don't know how many people out there woke up this morning and said, today is the day. I'm getting on the bus and I'm going to go find that bridge to just crash down into the water. And I'm about to go try to look for victims by myself with no scuba gear, if you get what I'm saying. It's some folks out there that just need, <clears throat> need to hear something kind need to hear something nice even when they ain't nice themselves really some people just lashing out and be mean and evil and wicked just because man they ain't never heard nobody tell them they love them more like ask them are they okay really you think you don't you've been loved so much in your life you think that everybody get that same amount of love and i'm gonna <clears throat> i'm gonna switch this around in a minute but i, I want to let y'all know I'm one of them people. I've been so greatly loved all of my life and I've always had family and friends to care for me and love me and keep me safe all my life. M with my ignorance, I thought that everybody had that kind of love in their life. I thought that everybody was being showered with hugs and kisses and appreciation and gratitude. And that just is not the case. As I got older, I realized, man, hey, Everybody ain't got their mama and their daddy in their house. I, that just wasn't nothing I thought about. As I got older, I realized, hey, even though you got just your mama in your house, hey, that don't mean that she ain't doing drugs. And then I have people who had their mama and their daddy in their house, and both of them is some dope heads. And it's like, or arguing, or dysfunctional. Or, everybody didn't come from a household like mine. I'm not saying mine was perfect. Mine was far from Brady Bunch. But damn, I never had a worry or care about anything in my entire life until I moved up out of my house and become my own man. I grew up in pure ignorance. I was sheltered from the world when it comes to that because I thought everybody had a loving, sweet family, loved their sisters and brothers, their mama you come home and mama is home, daddy is home. Nope. There's people out there that come home, don't even got no food to eat. I came home. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> I came home every day from school. My mother, my mother was a, a stay-at-home mom for the most part. And I came home to a meal. Listen, from school. Take your book bag off, take your clothes off, go up there, get ready, come down here at the dining room table and do your homework. And when I sat to the table to do my homework, man, it's, it's a ham sandwich right there and some Kool-Aid. I thought every kid got home and had a sandwich. It, it explains a lot. <laughs> but I thought every kid got home, had some Kool-Aid, had a sandwich, and, and, and about a, a, a four stack of cookies, a Oreo cookies, right? I thought all kids got home. So when I was talking to kids in school, I would be like, hey, man, I was I was going to do my home rest today. But, man, that ham sandwich got so good, I asked for another one. My friend would say, what ham sandwich? <laughs> you know, the ham sandwich that we all eat while we do our homework. It was so good. I didn't even want no chips. I just wanted another sandwich. You know, you ever been that way? He say, y'all got ham? <laughs> Y'all got ham in your house? And, and bread? Yeah. Why are you talking so crazy? Of course we do. Like everybody. 
right? He said, no. Nah. No, nah, not everybody ain't got no ham and bread and mayonnaise. Oh, cheese? Oh, y'all boiling? Y'all got cheese? Oh, shit. <laughs> My friend is rich. You go through life thinking everybody got that. That's what, And I think this, when it comes to marriages and relationships, every woman is out there leaving their men for a pipe dream. I could have worded that a little better. <laughs> Every woman is out there leaving their husbands for a pipe dream that don't exist. <laughs> They think it's better on the other side. They think everybody, your husband come home, he go to work every day, and he come home, he bring home the bacon, he pay the bills. His feet might be a little stinking, but he doing everything that he's supposed to be doing. And then he's so tired, he fall asleep in a chair. He ain't take you dancing, he ain't take you bowling, he ain't take you to the club. He fell asleep because he been working 16 hours. And then you think it's something better out there. And you don't even realize it's women out here that would literally make you gargle blood like scope to be in your position. They would literally choke you out and drag you behind a dumpster to be in your position. They wish they could come home to a man with stinking feet to sleep in his easy chair. They wish. They wish that. And fellas, it's the same thing with us. We want that girl to be twerking and working, man. There's it's fellas out there that like, look, man, Long as she can twerk or long as she can work or long as she can just stay to the house and not be over my neighbor's house, either gossiping or laying up with they hood. I can. I, I'm starting to learn more appreciation. Because you don't realize how many other people ain't got the things that we take for granted. We take everything for granted. And I just I'm just. Waking up to realize, man, I'm blessed. And it ain't the materialistic things that I'm, I'm saying I'm blessed for. It's just the, the fact that, man, <laughs> I could be in Haiti. <laughs> I could be in Haiti right now. You know? Whew. I could be in, I could be in Ukraine right now. Getting bombed on. I could be... In the middle, man, I'm blessed. I got bills like everybody else got bills. I got worries and woes. But at this very moment, I'm not worried about a doggone mortar shell going off for no reason. Hallelujah. If you don't realize how blessed you is, you may want to stop and just think for a minute. Good God. Because you don't know how many other people, man, you, you complain that all we eat is macaroni and cheese and, and burger meat. Man, I'm tired of it, man. You make something else, man. Shut up, man. Stop telling your wife what, what you want to have instead. Let me tell you something. There's some brothers out there that would let your teeth out for some fresh air to be in your position. Y'all seen that video game back in the day, Snake? Where Snake is sneaking up behind him and stuck, choke him out and drag him behind the doggone dumpster. <laughs> yes. My kids used to play that. I don't know nothing about it. I might even be calling it the wrong thing. But I watched my kids play that, that video game where that, that secret op come and sneak behind somebody and, ch -ch 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 -ch, and then drag him behind a dumpster or something. You know how many fellas out there would leave you somewhere stinking just to be in your shoes? You complaining about your woman ain't did this, she ain't did that, she don't clean up, she don't cook, she don't do this. Man, you might want to reevaluate your situation because I'm going to be honest with you, especially these days and time, it ain't a whole bunch of them out there doing that anyway. <clears throat> you will leave home just to go get another one that's doing the exact same thing or worse. Sit down, talk to her. Tell her, like, can you cook me a sandwich or something? Stop Whispering in your own mind like, man, she don't never be cooking. I don't never come home and smell nothing. Man, that's why next time Sabrina asks me at lunch to go out to lunch with her at work, I'm going. Man, you better talk to your wife first before you go with Sabrina and Sabrina got crabs. <laughs> you, better go, you better talk to your wife first and ask her first before you go be making lifetime decisions that you, you, you don't want to make. Sabrina 
got an S to the T to the D. And you don't even know it. You don't even know it. You think she, oh, she fine. She got a big old dunk. Boy, I can't wait to, okay. And the first thing you ask Sabrina at the job, you be like, why ain't no other dudes trying to holler at you, man, fine as you is? I don't never see nobody trying to holler at you. I don't know. I guess I'm just too pretty. I'm too fine for them or something. They all be thinking that I'm so fine that, you know, I must already got a man or something. I don't know. Mm, that ain't always the story. <laughs> She probably ain't got no man. Not because she fine or nothing. It's probably because everybody else know that she, she got that flamethrower down there and she can't wait to set you on fire. And I ain't talking about that. If I were you, I'm talking about that thing that's going to have you to the hospital in the morning. <laughs> you going to mess up and, and write a, a check that your ass can't cash. Literally, you ain't going to be able to cash that. <clears throat> I don't be knowing why dudes don't be trying to talk to me, trying to holler, I guess, because I'm so fine or whatever. They think I already got a man or something. And probably because I wear this ring on all these fingers and they think one of them is a wedding ring. But that's not the case at all. Well, what is it? <laughs> well, what is the problem then? <laughs> you know, how come you take so much medication on your way or every time you go to lunch? What is that for? You got you got a uh, high blood pressure or something because you sure take a lot of pills. You okay? You all right? <laughs> Keep that thing functioning in order. That's what that's for. Ask questions before you leave the house, man. Be appreciative of what you got. That's all I'm saying. You know? You know how we go around the house and you ain't got enough money? To go to the grocery store to make a meal and go just go buy you a meal. You look around. Listen to me. This is this is marital marital advice. You look up in the cupboard. You ain't got no money, so you ain't going to get no McDonald's. You like man, I'm hungry as hell, man. I gotta make something. I gotta figure something out here. You go up in the cupboard and you start scrapping stuff together. You got an old can of of uh, cherry to go in a pie for some reason. Um, uh, uh, a thing of um cheesecake mix in a box you got two slices of ham <laughs> you ain't even got no bread you got like <clears throat> you got a tortilla and some taco shells you got some cinnamon and some onions you don't know what you're gonna do with none of that when you really are desperate to make it work to make your belly get full to put some nutrients in your body you will make a cuisine that you will try to duplicate out of all of that stuff that don't none of it go together you will make it work and you will make it work so good that you will try to duplicate it so you can let somebody else taste it like man i made something i was so hungry one day dog i had like an old burnt up sausage i had like some ramen noodle packets i ain't had no noodles i had a tortilla shell and you make something so ex exquisite and extraordinary that you try to duplicate that so you can get your family and friends to taste it right okay you do the same thing in your relationship same thing in your marriage you hungry hey, look you starving for affection you starving for love you starving for attention and you don't feel you can't don't go out and try to get that because you ain't got the kind of income that can afford mcdonald's and burger king kind of love stay into the house stay with your wife stay with your husband and try to figure out go into your cupboards and try to figure out what can we do to make this thing work between us and make this delicious? Make this love between us delicious. Ain't no different. You ain't always got the stuff you need to go out in the world and try to make things work. You're going to go out to McDonald's. If you even had the money, you're going to go out to McDonald's. You're going to eat a cheeseburger. And guess what happens when you eat that first cheeseburger? What enough? What enough? You're going to go get another cheeseburger. What happened then? What enough? You gonna go get another one. Now you want some Taco Bell. You done pooped that out, whatever they made all this stuff with. Now you want some Burger King. That ain't no different when you step outside your home. Nothing is good enough. All the stuff that you thought you was leaving your wife or your husband for, you think is out there in the street. And the next thing you do, you go out trying to find what you feel that you ain't getting in your household. And it ain't out there either. 
All you doing is putting empty calories into your life. You out there eating empty calories. <laughs> you can take that however you want to. <laughs> you out there in, in the world, in the street, eating empty calories. You shouldn't be doing that. You should only be eating your wife's cooking. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. You should only be eating your wife's cooking. Don't be out there eating at all these, you know, different restaurants. If you get what I'm saying. Only eat your wife's cooking if you're going to eat anything. Look here, back on trail. Stay on home, man. Try to try to find things to make that work. Some seasoning, some spices to make that thing work, man. We ain't appreciative of nothing no more, man. And you, we all think that everybody got it great and everybody don't. So before you go running out trying to think that everybody living like you, man, they ain't. They ain't. I had a friend. Well, it wasn't my friend. It was my brother's friend. And he, they, they are well-to-do. And they have always been very well-to-do. I don't want to say rich. Yes, I am. I'm going to go and say it. I don't like that word. They is rich. They was rich. They was growing up rich. And let me tell you something. He talked to us in the hood like how I was telling you, what? Everybody has a 10-speed bike. Where's your 10-speed bike? I don't got no 10-speed bike. Me and my brother had to build our bikes from the junkyard. Literally. I had a red big wheel with a yellow wheel on the front because my daddy went to the junkyard and got a front wheel because mine had, had busted on my big wheel. Y'all know them big wheels used to have that glue glue, glue glue, glue glue. He, my daddy took that off, went to the junkyard, find a whole yellow big wheel with the back wheels was busted. He took the front wheel and handlebars off and put it on my red big wheel. Now I got a red big wheel with yellow wheel in the front and two black wheels in the back. My best friend, I mean, my brother's best friend used to laugh at that. He like, why don't you just buy another Bic wheel? <laughs> he used to talk like that too. Why don't you just buy another Bic wheel? That's ridiculous. Now your Bic wheel is Mitch match. <laughs> it's Mitch match. Hell man, I got on one red sock and one green sock and I'm only seven years old. I don't give a handful of dams about anything right now. I, and I can get away with it at seven. So, you know, I'm riding clean though. My big wheel is mismatch, but it's clean, though. So I used to take the water holes and stick it down in them holes where you put the uh, seat adjustment, stick it down there, act like I'm filling it up with gas. You couldn't tell me nothing. But he was so ignorant to the ways of the hood, he thought everybody had brand new bikes. Everybody, as soon as you turn 15 years old, got a brand new car, not a used car. He got a brand spanking new car. So my brother was like, how the hell he get a new car? <clears throat> So that's, that's, you think everybody living like you and they ain't. And it's easy to get swayed into thinking that other people got it like you. And, and that's where you need to humble yourself, even myself, and realize everybody ain't as fortunate. I ain't going to keep you all no longer. I just want to say thank you. Happy holidays. Happy Easter. I love you. And I'm out. Everybody, become a beekeeper. You will learn more about yourself by keeping bees. Thank you for listening to me today. And thank you for sharing another one of my miracles of the day. I appreciate all y'all for being here. I truly do. Lev Farmer 73 and Puppy Peach. I'm going to call our adventures Paw, Paw, and Peach. P-A-W, P-A-W, and Peach. Ain't that right, Peach? She ain't interested in the camera. Everybody, have a wonderful day. I love you and I'm out. Peace. Soon I can find out how to get out of this. Because this ain't normal. This ain't the same.